My name is Will L. Young. I'm the owner, driver, builder of the Vibrant Performance Civic version two this time, coming back from Pikes Peak International Hill Climb. With a little bit of prep work. <laughs> We did our testing at Toronto Motorsports Park. That was awesome. That was like great to get the car out there, get some miles underneath it. Taking a fresh build like that took a lot to get the data that we needed. We had so many items that we actually had to check off the vehicle to make sure that, you know, not only was it functional, that was from suspension to engine parameters to ECU, transmission. We actually had, like Aaron Ware, help us get a whole bunch of coolers done in time so we could obviously get it into the car before it packed up and headed towards the US. Something of an advantage was we actually had a shop rented out in Colorado Springs, 40 Engineering, Cold Rand's shop. You know, he's a fabrication facility. He has so many tools there. We went there knowing that we could accomplish and, and do a lot of um, the final work, prep work there at the facility. Our main goal when we were actually packing for the original trip down to the US was getting everything so we could actually get to the tire test days at Pikes Peak and get some testing actually on the hill at elevation. Everything reacts differently when you're up at 12, 13, 14,000 feet. Getting that data is extremely valuable. As far as the actual car being finished, it was like, there was still, there was still quite a checklist to, to make all the rules that were required and all the safety that was required. Tech day is the Monday of, of race week and official practice starts Tuesday. If you don't meet tech, you have to obviously get every, everything done, hopefully before you hit practice session the next morning. I don't wanna say it's simple, it, it, but it's all there. So you just gotta make sure that you go through the checklist and make sure that you have everything done to T. And that's definitely something we took the time to make sure that you know we went through every single rule and we just checked it off one by one by one by one until we knew that 100% we rolled up to tech day, confident that this car didn't need anything. Tire test day is, it's an optional day. Crazy enough, you know, our very first tire test day, there was only four cars on in our group up in Upper Mountain. I look back at that and it was, it was a great opportunity, especially because, you know, this chassis is so fresh still and there's still so much to figure out on it. Completely honest, I was not that fast, but it was just great. It was great to get there, get, feel comfortable. The car felt great. That was one thing. The balance of the car, the braking, the suspension, everything was very in unison in the car. When you get that confidence where you feel like I can just keep pushing and pushing and pushing, it really goes so far. When we actually did the official practice runs up at the very top, you know, my comfort level just was at, at an all time high, literally. This is the very first time we run a completely sealed flat floor. So the exhaust didn't have any area that was exposed to the ground. We had completely header wrapped the exhaust from front to back. And even then I could, I could literally smell some paint burning. Good thing, you know, Vibrant has a full catalog of heat protection. You know, take the underbody down, take the exhaust off, and then fully heat wrap the entire exhaust system. So that, that turned out to be awesome. The only thing that wasn't very cool with that was we were burning our exhaust wrap because it was containing the heat so well that the exhaust wrap was burning. So my very first time that I was going, it was Middle Mountain, I totally remember this and all I could smell was just the header wrap. Obviously weather on race day was very compromised this time because of the snow at the summit. Half of our run was basically in wet, damp conditions and I was on my Hoosier slicks, so, or my H7s. Unlike in 2019 where they gave me a heads up that there was a little bit of rain that they cited at Glen Cove, I had no, nobody told me anything about rain. So I was expecting actually a full dry circuit. It was kind of a shock. <laughs> I was lucky because it was kind of right at a transition from a corner into a straight. So it wasn't going like, let's say into a braking zone because if it had gone into a braking zone and it was going from dry to wet, I think a very different outcome experience of this would have been. Two things that worked out really, really good. Our qualifying days started in the rain. It was raining quite heavily that day. So much so we weren't even sure if we'd actually have to put down a decent qualifying time. For my second run, I actually put on a brand new set of H7s. Because of that, I had already run in a semi-damp condition. My comfort already at during qualifying was great. Like I felt like, man, I could I can do this. I can like drive pretty hard, brake pretty aggressively. Other than that initial shock of, oh, you know, I got crazy wheel spin. Okay, let's back it off and let's just drive to the limit. This year we switched to a new ECU company for us, Mtron. Nick from Mtron USA, 
who's also their head tech, actually came out to Pikes Peak to do trackside support for us. Both sides learned a lot. I think he got to experience Pikes Peak and the uniqueness of Pikes Peak, the uniqueness of you know an 800 horsepower front wheel drive car battling out on these crazy hairpins. For me, being able to go and finish a run and come back down and say, hey, you know, Nick, I, I find this or this or this, you know, can we, can we change these settings? Can we change that settings? He'd come over, he'd be like, yeah, let me do some changes. Here you go, go back out again, tell me how you feel, come back down. And, and just that feedback, you know, that back and forth action was massively beneficial to the development of the car. Obviously 2019, our Achilles, Achilles heel was um, transmission. You know, I'm not gonna blame it. We ran that transmission the whole entire event, literally every single, the tire test days, all the practice, we actually had a spare transmission. We really should have probably swapped into the car, but we were just so busy trying to deal with, with the oil temperature issues. I don't know if you remember that. We were like struggling with oil temp. We were struggling with oil pressure. So that was our main focus was getting the coolers, getting the fans. And sure enough, you know, last mile and a half, you know, we break that transmission. Lucky enough, we were able to finish and, and reach the summit and, you know, my, my first event to be able to make the summit, I felt like that was a lucky third place where it was like, yeah, you know, it was just more because of the other competitors not doing so well that we, we were able to get our third place. This year was very different. This year, you know, we, we got our third place again. This one feels like we earned this one. Our performance was definitely there. The car was amazing. The Quaif, we worked with them directly to make sure that, you know, we, we not only improved the unit, but didn't obviously have any failures this year. The part that actually gave us an issue was the input shaft, and they've actually revised that in their current transmissions. Last time when we ran that event, we used some off-the-shelf components for our oil cooling. This time, Aaron Weir, the, the lead tech at Vibrant, make me some custom uh, oil coolers, specifically where I wanted them placed and how I want them to be utilized. You know, when you have an over-the-counter or off-the-shelf core, you're basically limited to the placement and flexibility of those sizes and in the inlets and outlets. In this particular case, I was like, Aaron, I want this cooler here, I want this inlet here, I want this outlet here, and this is how I want to make it mount. The efficiency of these coolers was actually too good. We actually had a problem of getting the oil temp hot enough this time. So the irony is, is last time, you know, we were baking our oil, this time we couldn't get our oil hot enough. Whether we downsize the coolers, um, or block off some of the coolers, we have that flexibility. You can take something that overcools and just limit the amount of cooling it's providing versus the other way is impossible. You can't make a cooler more effective than its ability. In a normal environment, you know, the straightest line possible is, is kind of the, the way you would take it. But Pikes Peak doesn't work like that because some parts, the bumps are on the inside, some parts, the bumps are on the outside, some parts, it's all the way across. Sometimes you can run flat out on an inside line, even though the correct line might be outside. I think that's the thing with these, these privateer teams is we do have to be resourceful. And that is actually one of the biggest advantage with Vibrant Performance is the resources of parts and, and, and fabrication components and odds and ends that you need come race day. We message you halfway in the middle of the night sometimes simply because it's like, you know, oh, this thought comes up. Oh, no, 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 we need this, we need that because we need this to solve a problem, not just build a car. Yeah, you know, we all look at AN lines and, and all the fittings and getting everything to fit right. That's a, how most people would associate vibrant performance, I feel. You know, it's like, oh, I need the titanium so I can finish my exhaust. I need the HD clamp so I can get all my intercooler piping done. Most people look at the building side of the car. I would say like my experience is further than that. You know, we're campaigning these cars, we're racing them, we're pushing them to the limits. We're trying to literally I don't want to say we're not trying to break the car, but we're, we're always on the cusp of breaking things and we're pushing the boundaries. And a lot of times we find that we need solutions to problems. And that's where Vibrant comes in so much where it's like, hey, Art, we need this, this ob obscure thing from the catalog. Can you get it to us? Because we need to control heat, protect the firewalls, protect the exhaust tubing. Um, protect the carbon underbody in my case. A lot of times like, you know, you look at the key parts in the catalog and you don't look at the dry brake fittings. Like I showed you how I had that dry brake fitting on my on my dry sump tank. And that was a godsend. Like, you know, we were able to empty our tank in minutes and without any tools necessary. 
And every time I open up the catalog, I, I, I think I mentioned to you, it's like, oh, why don't I have this in the car? This is perfect. And when it comes to track time and you're racing and it's like, when it, it just comes down to it's like, no, 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 we have, to, we have to solve this. Like you're building a SEMA car. Let's say, for example, if I were to pick that cosmetics, fitment, lining everything up nicely, Vibrant has that in Asus as well. The way that every bung is ready to weld, cleanliness, like these things are clean. Like they're, you don't have to run a solvent to them. They're ready to weld. So from that aspect, you can go and say, you know, this product is ready for its SEMA quality. It's SEMA ready. It's SEMA show car ready. Bluetooth IC piping is, no, anyways. But when you take that exact same car and you bring it to the track, it's not the same. Now we're running at stress. Now we're pushing 30 pounds and the stuff's moving. Your HD clamps is, the reason why there's this eight degrees of movement is because you're racing and the engine's moving back and forth and you need that movement. You need the O-rings to, to do their job. You take it above the SEMA level, the show car level, and you put it to the track car level. I can honestly say like I track prove vibrant products. The stress we put on, especially Pikes Peak, the amount of heat that goes up and down, the amount of movement. I don't think many people understand like how much more it takes to make sure that the product not only survives, but excels at an event like that. The Vibrant products work. They, they work both off track and on track. It's not, what did you bring? It's what can you get? <laughs> you know, like how far can you push it?